Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Hear the affirmation. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1 and 4. Our theme psalm is Psalm 38, today from Eugene Peterson's The Message Paraphrase. Take a deep breath. God, calm down. Don't be so hasty with your punishing rod. Your sharp-pointed arrows of rebuke draw blood. My backside stings from your discipline. I've lost 20 pounds in two months because of your accusations. My bones are brittle as dry sticks because of my sin. I'm swamped by my bad behavior, collapsed under an avalanche of guilt. The cuts in my flesh stink and grow maggots because I've lived so badly. And now I'm flat on my face, feeling sorry for myself, mourning tonight. All of my insides are on fire. My body is a wreck. I'm on my last legs. I've had it. My life is a vomit of groans. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know the sighs confined and hidden within the depths of our hearts. Sighs for which there are often no words. Do not be far from us, O God, when we cry out unto you. Hear our prayers today. Amen. Our theme this week is a complex one, the gift of tears. Many may have grown up in households where it wasn't appropriate to share tears or churches where it wasn't appropriate to have tears. And that can repress feelings and experiences in sometimes very painful and harmful ways. And so this might be a very challenging week to think of tears as a gift. But how can those experiences truly, truly help us know God? Today's reading is from Wendy M. Wright, Tears of a Greening Heart. Tears are deemed a gift by many ancient masters of the spiritual tradition, a gift not merely in the sense of something given, but in the biblical sense of charism, a gift of the Spirit, belonging on the list that Paul enunciates at his first letter to the Corinthians. Tears were, for the ancient church, given to some along with wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, prophecy, and the like, for the life of the entire community. It seems to have been Athanasius, a great 4th century bishop of Alexandria, who first spoke of tears as such a gift. But other notable early Eastern Christian writers expounded on them as well. Assuming that inner dispositions had corresponding outer expression, the Eastern church writers most often saw tears as the outward manifestation of the spiritual experience, penthos, a term we might translate as compunction. Compunction literally means to puncture with. It refers to the spiritual pain due not only to a shocked recognition of sin and human weakness, but the simultaneous awakening dissatisfaction with sin and longing for God. To have our hearts thus punctured, is both the beginning and the dynamic of the journey. Mm. 
something to think about and something uh, we've already kind of expressed this week talking about the gift of tears. We talk about loving God with all of our mind, all of our heart, all of our strength, all of our soul or our spirit. Your mind, your heart, your heart represents your emotions. Your mind, your heart, your body, your strength, your hands are all part of your being, as is your spirit. The physical things are the first three. And they're all tools we use to glorify God. And that's why, you know, the, the amygdala, the, the, the emotion center of our, our brain or spinal column back there, right? It can create in us emotions. When we are uh, scared, then there's that fight or flight response. It can build up anger when we repress things. That isn't really speaking to our true soul. It's, it's processing things from outside. But I truly believe, as Wendy is trying to say here, that sometimes something deep within us comes out. Sometimes an outward experience, an inward experience, sometimes those two meet and you can't just, you can't help yourself. Whether it's great sadness, great injustice, great love, great joy, peace. Tears represent outwardly, physically something inward and spiritual. In that sense, if I'm not being too forward, tears may be sacramental. Now, of course, in the United Methodist Church, we only have two sacraments. (laughs) But that doesn't mean things can't be metaphorically sacramental. An outward sign of an inward grace. Hmm. I need to think about that for a little bit myself. (laughs) Our scripture reading today comes from Philippians 3, chapter 12 through 21. This is the happiest, right? (laughs) The happiest letter, happiest book in the Bible. It's not that I've already reached this goal or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed hold of me for this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I don't myself think I've reached it. But I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out to the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Jesus Christ. So all of us who are spiritually mature should think this way. If anyone thinks differently, God will reveal it to him or her. Let's live in a way that's consistent with whatever level we have reached. Brothers, sisters, become imitators of me. Watch those who live, I'm not St. Paul saying that, uh, who live this way. You can use us as a model. As I have told you many times, and now I say with deep sadness, many people live as enemies of the cross. Their lives end with destruction. Their God is in their stomach. They take pride in their disgrace because their thoughts focus on earthly things. Our citizenship is in heaven. We look forward to a Savior that comes from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform our humble bodies so that they are like glorious bodies by the power that also makes him able to subject all things to himself. God bless the reading of the letter today. Paul's overcome with lots of emotion, great happiness in this book, but also great sadness because he recognizes that there are, there's a lot of people that just don't get it. There's a lot of people floundering around. There's a lot of people, and it's never, you know, for Paul, it's never this sense of, oh, those bad people over there, or, oh man, look at how messed up they are. For Paul, it's this, it's, it's this gut pain that says there's a better way. And I want you to know it and I want you to live it. And, and I am distressed because you don't see it. Jesus was the same. He came to bring love and light, laughter. And people continue to choose pain and destruction. 
Paul talks about going on to perfection. When I was ordained a United Methodist elder, I had to make a vow that I was moving on to perfection, Christian perfection, as we define it in the Methodist church as perfect love of God and neighbor. Now, can we achieve that in our lifetime? I think yes. But I think as soon as we, as soon as we experience it just a moment, we realize there's a whole nother level as Paul is talking about. There's a whole nother tier. There's a whole nother experience. Or maybe we have that little moment and then we get distracted by the world. But for me, that Christian perfection really is growing in love. And when you have those moments, it, it can be a gift of tears. I found myself so overwhelmed by perfect love within the church, within the community, within others, within people outside of the church who have expressed it, where I've seen it in them, in their actions, and their hearts. Something wells up that has to come out, that words don't express, that songs don't glorify. It's, it's the gift of tears that you can offer an acknowledgement that there is something out there that truly loves us, that calls us to love each other. Friends, today we come with our petitions. It's okay to ask God for what you need, for what your heart is desiring, longing for. Spend a moment of silence, requesting what your heart truly needs. And if you don't know, requesting the wisdom and strength to realize what deep inside your heart is truly longing for. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.